Hello everyone, I am Janne Savic Mikko, and I'm here with uh, David Dog Cairo. <laughs> and we'll be guiding you through the action of the King Wing Pro League this week, or this today. Um, with this is week 8, day 2, and we have 5 amazing matches for today. Yeah. How are you feeling, David? I'm pretty, pretty good. I woke up a little bit early, a little tired, but should be fun to cast. Pretty excited about it, so yeah. What about you? Uh, yeah. All Damn. of the matches look really, really sweet. <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, this is like the the time in the league where I it's actually like you can figure out the rankings and how badly you need to win. <laughs> so I think it makes it a bit like even more exciting than it might have been on the first weeks. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't know the the weight of the matches. They feel like it's like the end of the season, so you really like feel the pressure of it, especially when you're playing. Like yesterday, I played against Trump and. It was, uh, it was a very important match. Sadly, it didn't go my way, but I'm sure uh, a lot of these people will be uh, performing a little bit better, or at least trying a little bit harder in these next couple matches. Yeah, I can feel you there. So for me, too, like the first matches that I played, uh, I, I kind of felt like, okay, I'll do my best, but there was not that much like on the line, or it felt like it's a long season and everything. And I, I started off kind of rough, <laughs> zero <laughs> three, but but right now it's like. My next match, I think it's next week, so that one is going to be like really going to be tryharding and and uh, absolutely like bringing out my best decks. And I think all of the players, unless you're like already secured your first spot, which I don't think anybody has like really like is that far ahead or anything in standings. But um, like this is the time where uh, where you really like need to step up your game, and I I really expect all of these players to bring their absolute best because it's uh, it's not just about like uh, making it to the to rank one the only top the uh, top five players qualify for the next season and it's a big league so it's true plus i mean even if you're at the bottom of the league you can still like get a hundred dollars for winning a match or something like that so everyone tries that's why i really like this league because even if like you're at the very bottom at least you can win some money and you know absolutely this hinder like another the... pro player from mm -hmm. getting to the finals yeah, this is uh, for for in Hearthstone. This is the first first. I'm I not not to mean to like spire shots at other leagues, but I but personally I consider this like the the first big one. This is like the main league in Hearthstone right now. This is the one you do you want to do well in. Uh, has a lot of viewers. Even if you're like you said in the bottom of the rankings, you still you should you should still uh, do your best and like show these people on your way out from the league that how how well you can do and like what what you can do so. Leave yeah. a, like a good impression of yourself. Yeah, as I, I do agree. This is a very, very good league. It's really well run, in my opinion. And I don't know, it's it's very good. <laughs> yeah, the production is really smooth. Like uh, one of my fav absolute favorites. So it's it's uh, it's been smooth. Hearthstone still is kind of there isn't like one right or wrong way to like run the production or oh, or make right. that thing like right. But I just feel like. In this one, everything has been good. There are wrong ways to run production. <laughs> Absolutely, we yes. have seen it in the past. Things have gone wrong many times. <laughs> I've been seeing, I've been play, like watching this and playing the leagues and, and tournaments since the beginning of Hearthstone. And uh, the, the, let's just say that uh, not everything has always been this smooth. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um. All right. So uh, you can now also like for those who use Twitter. Remember to use the hashtag Kingwin League when you post about uh, about this league. Some of them will be shown on the stream. And uh, yeah, if anybody's wondering, like usually it's been on uh, on Thursdays today too. But uh, this week we are doing it on Wednesday. So make sure to tell your friends if they, if they might have missed it that, that uh, the day has been moved. If you know that your friend is uh, likes to watch this league and uh, he might have missed the info, so. Make sure to like pick it up or like send him a message on on Skype or Facebook. So that tell him that the league is coming. Also, also. Kingwin is looking for casters. So if you want to become a caster for KPL, send a VOD of yourself, all your mad casting skills to uh, esports at kingwin.net. Uh, so you should do that if you want to become a very cool caster like Mir Savish. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, one day, no, me, me and Dog, we're just like filling in, we're mostly like playing, but there's, a, there's like absolutely a, like a, an opening here, if you feel like you, you know a lot about the game, even if you don't like, um, 
maybe play it like 24 7 or you're not rank one legend that that's not what it takes to be a caster you just need to understand the game so um if if you if you feel like feel like becoming a caster now is the time it won't get any better than this yeah exactly if you i don't know frodan did a really good job breaking into the scene and things like that so it's never yeah. too late might as well start early if you're interested just give it yeah. a shot it's it's really up it, it gets harder and harder it's always like if you are outstanding you'll make it but uh but it gets harder so i would suggest you to do that so esports at kingwin.net and uh yeah what else uh, um looking at the standings yeah me too i think uh i'm wrong on there i didn't win against trump yesterday oh, yeah. so i'm like rank six or five or something yeah 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 my next match is gonna make or break me making it next time in the league yeah you better do well i wish you luck <laughs> if you if you finish sixth i don't think you actually get anything and nope. you get kicked out of the league <laughs> shame you're not even good enough <laughs> to hang with the top a little tier. bit of pressure there yeah <laughs> I mean, playoffs is like the first goal, but in the end, like if you manage to keep in the, keep yourself in the league, maybe next season will be better, exactly. and it's gonna be another twenty five thousand dollars, I believe. So it's like, a, <laughs> uh, it's something that should be taken serious Plus, for every, yeah. everyone who like wants to make some money and make a name out of themselves in the Hearthstone scene. Also, I mean, there's gonna be like what. 10 qualifier spots for next season it's gonna be pretty crazy oh, yeah. i'm really excited to see the new players especially because like i don't know the people who are on top of the ladder like are on top of the um standings right now are pretty well-known players so this league will obviously like stay really popular even with new players and like it'll really help like meld those players so if you want like exposure and you think you're good at hearthstone you definitely need to play the qualifier because that's like really important to get into this league every week that's like it's like eight tournaments right because you play every week so really important yeah. but especially for like exposure to like if you do it if you uh, qualify for the season two and you do well in the league you you will get your name out there by playing against the well known well known players and um, potentially even like crossing them with your cool own decks and uh, that way you will also might might get into other tournaments get to invites it's, it's kind of snowballs from there it's really it's important. Really good opening. I feel like the, for the first season, like invite only was a good way to like kind of kick things off. For sure. But it's it's yeah. definitely sweet to know that you expand on that and just let like newcomers come in and spice things up. They definitely did it right, and I mean, ten qualifier spots is a pretty good amount. I'd say it's like pretty fair. So. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. Um, I, I think that the, the balance of like having the fifty-fifty, like. Kind of like invites when well in this case like out of the invites so that they wants to stay in the league and having 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 half invites and half open uh, qualifier plays is a good balance i mean some could argue that it would be better if everything was open but um no <laughs> for those who actually like qualify for the league it for the exposure and everything it, it helps I think more it's, that it it's not be, open yeah exactly. it helps that there are no players so if you beat amas you beat reynard you beat Paws and like those are the guys who who you need to beat to make make a name out of yourself. Yes, the best is if you beat them with trolley decks and they like have really bad reactions. They're just like, oh my goodness, like how could I lose to this like you know inner fire charge priest with divine spirit? <laughs> and then you just like, there you go, front page of Reddit or something. Yeah, that's also some memorable moments. <laughs> <laughs> so our first match is going to be Xixo playing against Shio. Uh, both of them are 3-3 three and three right now. In the I middle think, of the no, standing. No. I don't think they are, are they? Uh, is it not updated? I think... Savige... Oh wait, that's you. Shio is 4-3 and three and Xixo is 3-4, and four, I think. Not 100% on that. But... Yeah, I saw that as well. Okay. But uh, I thought it was like maybe the Mossan. Because Mossan had, had to unfortunately drop out of the league. And all oh, of okay. Mossan's games were... Um, were taken out of the scores, so I, I believe the show might have lost one win against Masan in the standings because of that. Kind of to keep things fair, so it's like yeah, it's like that, that somebody can rip off a win against Masan, and other ones wouldn't even have an opportunity to do so. Yeah, so I guess it's uh, three and three and three and three. Is that the correct standings? 
Yeah, let's let's go with that for now. If we okay. get an updated info on that, uh, yes, both we got a confirmation from the admins. Both are oh, three and three. It's a very important match. For both of them. <laughs> yeah, get... this is like make or break. You could make it. You could even possibly make it into the finals and like. Oh man. Absolutely. Yeah. Like this is like we're winning here. Like there's a uh, two two or uh, two matches to go for both players. Yes, because Mason dropped out. So. By winning one match, basically, the chances to make to stay in the league are pretty good. Winning two matches would mean to, to get the playoffs, like r roughly speaking. Yeah. So, uh, if you drop a game here, you will actually be in your last match. You will be, you will be fighting just to stay in the league. But if you win here, then on the other hand, you're pretty much kind of like yours. You should be okay. Yeah, you to should stay be in the league. And you just get to like play for a chance, chance to um, get a chunk of the 25k and. Uh, that's a, Potentially that's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. For like a six player final, that's really, really good. Yeah, all, right. all of them all of the matches are, are big, but this one might even like this is a good one to start things off, let's just say that. Yeah, because this, this might be a, out of all the matches, the highest stakes one. Yeah, because both players have so much on the line. I'm sorry. Show your new teammate, right? <laughs> yeah, I obviously we also talk about that a little bit. So uh two days ago, Team Liquid added a new player. Your old teammate. Sorry about that. It's okay. But uh, yeah, Shio is now rep representing Team Liquid alongside myself and Nerea. And this will be actually, I believe, this will be his first showing in the <laughs> in Team Liquid colors. So <laughs> I, I can't like uh, pretend that I wouldn't be biased here, but I just try to be fair and yeah, just like yeah. <laughs> not hype him up too much or anything. Although I do think that he's really awesome. But everybody knows that Xixo is. He's a beast, let's just say that. He's a top tier player. Both of them, very, very good players. I'm friends with both of them and practice with both of them every now and then. Yeah. So. Yeah. I can't really, like, uh, give anybody an edge here. Who, who would you predict? If you um, have a prediction. Well, well, do I get to know the classes or no? Like. Yes. Okay, so. Shio show... is playing Hunter Mage Warrior. And Xixo is playing Hunter Druid Warlock. Um, Hunter Mage Warrior, Druid Hunter Warlock. I would say Show is favored because he brought Mage, and I'm assuming it's going to be Freeze Mage. And Freeze Mage is decent against Hunter and Warlock. And then Show also has Warrior to deal with Hunter and Warlock. It just depends how the matchups go, but still, I, I would say that Show is favored based on classes. Um, based on just not knowing the classes and knowing the players, I would say Zixo might be a little favored because he has more experience with like tournaments and stuff not anything against show obviously he's a very good player he won xfinity or yeah xfinity thing so yeah it's gonna be a good match for sure yeah absolutely i'm, I'm looking at the list i, I kind of tend to lean towards the same opinion as you and i think based on the class the show has a tiny edge but the, the first match the first i mean the first game will be absolutely huge like what do they how do their classes match up against each other and who's gonna come out, come out ahead on the first game? It might be extremely important. So, um, so we have we are also we have the first picks visible here. So Xixo is going to kick things off with Warlock, and Shio is gonna play Mage. Ooh, man! If that's Freeze Mage, that is a good matchup. That's a very very good matchup. Uh, for Shio. Yeah, for Shio, exactly. I, I wonder if um, Zixo decided to change things up and bring like. Uh, Handlock, because like sometimes he does that to trip up his opponents, right? He's really known for Zoo. He just like spams Zoo on ladder, rolls four on implosions all the time, and then suddenly mm -hmm. in a tournament you're playing against him, you mulligan your entire hand, you know, like for uh, for Zoo. Then suddenly turn two life tap, and you're just like, ah, oh, hate my life. <laughs> well, um, I would be shocked to see Six offering a handlock here, just based on like the recent like search of. Um... Popularity in in the zoo warlock because of the imp gang boss. Yeah, what was it called? yeah. Card is good. It's quite amazing. It fits perfectly right in there in that in that empty spot in a way that at three mana. Because um, the one drops, the two drops have always been awesome for for our zoo. But there has been kind of maybe some problems with the tree drop because like harvest column doesn't feel all that great and like the void there is a bit clunky at times. So it kind of fills that gap. And also with the with the ability, it goes so well with the cast like knife juggler. Yeah, and like most of the sweepers don't even clear it for some reason. I think the only one that does is like swipe or something. Yeah. yeah. I hope Joe is playing freeze match because he has played um 
Tempo Might Mage. Have been a mech in the past. Oh, mech. Okay. I, I hope it's Freeze Mage as well. I brought Freeze Mage to the last couple of tournaments and lost, but it's still mm -hmm. a very good deck. But she always going to mulligan for a zoo. I'm, I'm absolute zoo, no matter what he's playing. Yeah. I agree. Hmm. Uh, let's just hope that it's. Uh... Okay, here we go. So it's ah, right. game one. Ooh, it's Mac. Oh no! Oh, no. It's not a good show at all. <laughs> Whoa, Zixo's running boom in his in his uh, warlock deck. I wonder if it's more mid range. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. We'll see, but that boom. Oh wow. God! I it's asked him about that. He shared me his deck list, and I was like, "Hey, like, why isn't there boom? Because he was running like double C giant, you know? Another BGH target's mm -hmm. fine." And he was just like, "I don't like boom." Lied to me. <laughs> Lied to me. Tro trying to throw you off. Yeah. But uh, this map, this matchup, I, I think it's like heavily favors the, the zoo. Uh, I would agree with you. This can go the way of the mech mage if he gets uh, like blast mage, some like huge tempo gain card. Even mad scientist helps, especially against this type of warlock. It's more mid range. So we'll see. Yeah, but looking at this start, it's, oh like, my it's actually looking extremely good for Shio right now. Like yeah. that's a horrible draw from Xixo. It's not like Xiao's hand is the best one ever, but it's it's good. It's good. And <laughs> Sixo's hand, on the other hand, it's horrible. Like he doesn't even have he missed the missed the one drop, which should not really happen with the zoo. There's a lot of one drops in there and he didn't find a single one. And also he does not have a play for turn three. So unless he top decks it then he, he's gonna have a really weak turn turn three. But Zixo does have the void caller into Doom Guard. That's like Mech Mage can't really deal with that. So I don't Oh yeah, know. that's true too. It's, like a, it's one of those swing cards. Exactly. Like, when you run cards like that, sure, you decrease your, like, consistency of getting lower curve, but you also increase your comeback mechanic a little bit, so it's good. But, like, I yeah. don't know. I think Show might, like, do a little bit too much damage here, because that's, like, a big board. You know, in a way, the, because because of how uh, how, how Mech Mage can deal with the Doom card, the Void Caller, in combination with the Doom card, is 4 mana, 8 attack, <laughs> and uh, 11 it's help. toughness. It's uh, 7 plus 4, yeah, 11. <laughs> Four mana. That's pretty good. That's value, yes. man. I don't know. I. It's hard to tell. This is this is going to be an interesting game. It all comes down to trades and things like that. How much damage the zoo takes. But he has like Sylvanas. He has an Argus. Argus is going to be really important, I'm sure. Yep. Good call by Shio. Right. Yeah, kind of all yeah. in, not playing around any Hellfire exactly. or anything like that. He did see the knife juggler, so it would be kind of weird if he did play, try to play around it somehow. But still, seeing that there was no one drop, seeing a tap pass on three, if I was sure, I would at least like thought about it a little bit. This is going to be a very good turn for Zixo. Oh yeah, you can get that. You have to get the Void Walker out of your hand, right? Yep. And then you could probably play maybe the Sea Giant. I don't you can... know. You can wow. Argus also. I think you save the Argus for a higher HP minion and hope you're not dead. I think so do. But that, that white color is actually a really bad one to draw. So he, abusive. Oh, it's not that bad because he can play. He can play it all. He can play the Void Walker, Walker and then the Sea Giant and the trade. Oh my Doom guard. Oh my goodness! This turn, it's so sick. That Void Walker oh. is actually really important because, like, oh. I think that prevents. Oh my gosh. I, I was I was actually not expecting I that. Didn't, I yeah, thought I he was going to play the Void Terror from his hand uh, to make sure to get that. So I feel, I can feel like he could have played the Sea Chant later. But I I mean I can't blame him for this. Getting that eight eight out of fast for sure is pretty I, good. Yeah, I think that's like a you kind of have to take that risk. I mean you don't have to. It would have been fine either way. But I I still think it was like necessary enough. So you just yeah. like Shredder set up for lethal. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Ping face. That's really important. He has six six mana for next turn. With the fireball ping, that should be game. Yeah, it's like game because uh, there's no cards that Warlock runs. Ah, it's oh. important, important win, especially with Mech Mage. Um, yeah, that was a, a little bit of RNG there. <laughs> but I mean, Sixo kind of exposed himself to it. He didn't have to play the Seed Giant. He could have played the Void Terror from his hand to make sure to get that one. And he, he would have had a big ass Void Terror. He would have had a 5 7. He, he could have, like, maybe. Delayed it, but I don't know. To be like, fair, he would have died in like two turns. Yeah, I mean, it would have like delayed delayed the game a little bit. He would have he would have killed one more minion off the board, but eventually, yeah, that's the, true. The mage will draw a crossbolt, so kind of playing to win there. And uh, Shio takes game one with uh, with 
with that good draw and uh, maybe a little bit of unfortunate draw from Xixo. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the problem with a more demon oriented deck. Like, it just I don't know. It doesn't draw as consistently into its low drops, so then you like are kind of playing catch up. That's why like more traditional zoo is a little bit more consistent in like you know dealing with like mech mage and I don't know matchups that you're good against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said about the the void caller there, it's kind of it has more power in it, but uh, it does bring that little bit of inconsistency because you're running those. Like more expensive cards. The traditional shoe doesn't run four drops. There would have been something like a one, one extra one drop or a, or a three drop, and now those turn just empty. Yeah. So more power, but more inconsistency. That's the verdict, I guess. I agree. So if you're Zixo here, do you pick the same class? I, I have this like conversation with like a lot of people, and it's like, do you do you pick the same class whenever you're playing uh, Conquest because most people expect the same class or do you pick like, mm -hmm. you know, the counter to the class that they think you're going to, or you know, the, the, you know, class, whatever. Do you put that well, much effort into it or do you just kind of like, you know, RNG it? So many people tend to stick with the same. Like I personally have kind of drifted towards just like predicting that the same class is going to stay and just pick the one that is better against it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> because it's so, it's, it, we see it so often that players pick the same class. But on the other hand, like there are a lot of like mind games going into it, and uh, sure. if you expect that your opponent expects you to think that he would stick to the same class, it's like yeah, it, it goes to the mind games. Uh, we have the like, classes for the next game, and it's actually going to stick. Sixo will stick to his warlock, and she always going to be playing hunter. Ooh, I wonder if it's phase or mid range. I don't see show playing mid range too often, so I'm gonna assume it's phase. I but... think so too. I think that. Um, that Joe has generally been uh, considering, like when I talked to him, that the face hunter is stronger than the mid range. But I can't quite remember like, uh, him playing that much face hunter, so I can't be sure. I guess okay. we just have to wait yeah, and see. Exactly. Which one do you think would do better? Um, against uh, all depends against, what uh, Zixo. Warlock. Against Warlock, um, probably. Honestly, Warrior. It doesn't do bad against the um, mid rangey version. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Alright, it is a face hunter. Mm. So excite. SM Orc, yep. SM Orc. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that hand from Zixo, boom, Sylvanas um, against. Uh, another brutal. horrible hand from Zixo. But it's like the, the downside of this deck. Like we mentioned it a few times already, but still. Exactly. Like I there is that Doctor Boom, there is that Sylvanas, and it messes up the curve. You don't have that consistency. Yeah. For uh, for show, it's looking quite good, I think. Yeah, like his it's... hand is like pretty pretty dope. The only thing that would be really really good would be a mad scientist, but I mean that's oh, yeah. good hands. I agree like with Doctor. Like one drop is not exactly the best one drop. Uh, not not the one you want to play on turn one, but it's still a one drop. And uh, the most important thing is that you have a play there, not that yeah. you just. Uh, Pass the turn because face hunt is all about tempo. Oh, that's a good oh, draw. Oh wow, that's, a that's good draw. absolutely the best draw. The, the knife, knife, the knife's gonna, yeah, yeah. I don't, oh. You just go face, like <laughs> definitely. Uh. <laughs> there are no good trades there. I don't uh, know. If I, like, the knife would have been better on face, but I don't think it matters that much. That Misha was actually the best one he could have gotten, I think. Yep. Uh, Xixo does have an answer to it in the form of an owl, yeah. but it's not like it's the greatest answer ever. I mean, but it kind of lets him get bypass the taunt still for the trade. He's at 20 HP. It's like turn four. It's, he's less than that. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. The thing is, if Zixo draws an Argus, this game is still winnable. Uh, do you like playing Creeper here, or do you like shoot better? Uh, it's a close call. Exactly. That's the thing. Like, Creeper's probably guaranteed like at least one damage. Plus, he has no. to waste like minions on board. I guess Creeper is better. I think Creeper is better because he yeah. also has the quick shot in his hand, so he needs to empty the board to get the draw potentially. And the, the Creeper is like a lot of things to like. Like the hundred, I mean the the wall kind of has to maybe deal with it, and uh, if they deal with it, then it's a lot of damage not going to face. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh. You don't need, I don't know, like whenever you're playing Face Hunter, a lot of people are just like, yeah, you need to like get the draw from Quick Shot. Like, hey, look at his, look at his life. He does not need the yeah. draw from Quick Shot. Is... You do not need a draw from the Quick Shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> well, this action is fast and furious today. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Well, I don't know if there's anything Zixo can do here. Well, he can... no. Yeah, there's a quick shot. He can hope, but I mean, <laughs> I guess his hand... It's not happening. It's like tapping into a farce here, which it... He needs to play the no, sea giant, and then he you needs know, to kill like, no. the, that, and then go face with everything. And then hope yeah. he draws into, like, a PO or something. This is the best play for sure, but I mean... Yeah, we can be no better. Quick shot hero power, that's five. Wall of life total, five. Hey! <laughs> Didn't get the draw. Can't use that. So bad. <laughs> Only used half the card. That's not work. That's not work. It's more. Yeah, that was a lot of stuff going to face in the first six turns. Yeah, it was just came down to Zixo not drawing any of his early game threats, and mm -hmm. uh, once again comes down to the consistency of drawing those cards. Yeah, that there's no room for uh, that inconsistency anymore. His yeah. back is against the wall now. But the thing is, bringing that type of deck to a tournament. I mean, it can pay off, right? Like, if you get, like, a little bit lucky, you curve in something really well, suddenly, like, there's no way they can win if you, like, curve out well with that deck, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes it's okay to bring those decks to tournaments. Um, Absolutely. And uh, I, I wouldn't, like, question uh, Sixos, uh, like, deck just that much. I, I think that he would not bring anything which would, which would be, like, considered inconsistent in any way. I like, I'm sure that he has played that deck a lot, and it, it hasn't usually been drawing that poorly. Yeah, I agree for sure. Well, yeah. the next game, show only has the warrior left. And yes, uh, warrior has to be Zixos, mm. Druid, Hunter, and Warlock. Or one of those. Huh? Oh, yeah, or, right. yeah, or, yeah. or, you're right, yeah. In the, in the Conquest format. And then, because the format is, has the, like, the tie-break scores, which is like, you, you want to win as many games as possible, even if, when you lose. It's better to lose 2-3 than it is to lose 0-3. Exactly. So uh, Xixo for sure is going to bring the deck that he considers the best against Warrior. <laughs> and uh, we can see that uh, Xixo has chosen Druid for the next game. Yep. And uh, he's for sure the favorite going into it. Yeah, he's definitely going for those tiebreak points here, at least. And, you know, obviously for the win. Um, I think that Zixo can win against Sho with his Druid and his... Warlock, you know, Warlock probably a little favored, like 50-50, mm -hmm. something like that. And then the Hunter, I mean, it'll be iffy. Um, that's going to be the hardest matchup. I think he's definitely favored with the Druid, though. Yeah, uh, this one is, is... Well, I'm not going to call it just yet. Because you might be playing the, the Patron Warrior, which has been kind of a hot topic lately. <laughs> a lot of players have been trying it, including myself on stream, have been trying it out when... Uh, it's quite good, I have to be, I have to say. So I'm hoping that Joe would play this, but Joe is not known for that type of warriors. So Joe is known for more, more is, regular type of warrior. It is but, definitely uh, like surprising how good that deck is. And yeah. let's uh, take a look at what text Please we have. play that. Oh my gosh! Can you see what I'm seeing? Yeah, he. he he's... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're on the gameplay now, so like that's. that's... It's interesting. Yes. Okay, so I actually, I th I think that this deck is better against Druid than traditional Warrior. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's that's my opinion too. I mean, okay, I am not gonna say absolutely because I have not played uh, as many games with the Patron Warrior as I have with the regular Warrior. But but my personal results against Druid have been way better. Like not, it's yeah, not even close. For sure. <laughs> Because one of the big things about about this matchup is the the, the Druid AOE. What does it do? It it deals one damage to all all targets as, except the main target. What does yeah. Grim Patron do? It duplicates if it's not killed. So if you can like set up a board where there's let's say full health Grim Patron and there's a two health Grim Patron, <laughs> the Druid can't really clear. What do you think about that silence? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know, that's a ship. I think this might be a bit weird, because he could have just dropped the shade. Because, I mean, that, yeah. that was more mana efficient. Plus, I mean, you're curving into something else also, it's not that big of a deal. I think, mm -hmm. I think like, Zixo's, like, thought process here is, like, if he draws into the, like, combo, I might lose. So I don't want to, like, you know, let him draw into the combo, so... Yeah, I, so, I think that's it. like that, but I, personally, I would have definitely leaned towards the shade thing. I also, uh, I also like Drake over shade on mm -hmm. turn five because he has the death bite if he attacks it's death bite 
and Boot Hoarder is dead regardless. Um, yeah. But there's merit to this play, obviously. Yeah. Um, Acolyte. Yeah. Has I to be Acolyte. If he had a Whirlwind, he could actually go face with the weapon too and just clean out that shade <laughs> for two cards doing it. Assert your dominance attack face. Yes. <laughs> Set up for the combo. <laughs> it's it's so impossible to calculate. Yeah, like even if you play against Druid, you, you're just like, okay, I'm at 15. If no Emperor has been played, it's like, okay, I'm at 15, I'm safe. But you're playing against Scream Patron Warrior, you're like, uh, I'm at <laughs> like 20. Three? Yeah, but 23, am I, am I dead? <laughs> Who knows, like, how much damage can that Green Patron Warrior dish out? Like, it's so insane to clock, but even when I'm playing it, like, I have sometimes, like, hard time figuring out, like, how much damage is there. But when you play against it, it's, like, it's impossible. Do you, uh, I actually really, really like this play from Sho. Developing oh, yeah. the 2-3, because, like, now, okay, turn 7 is always the Druid's turn to lore. And now, like... I don't know, Sixo can't, you know, play his lore because he developed a 2-3 as opposed to just playing the 2-2 two -two and armoring up, or 2-2 two -two and weapon, so... Yeah, I, I really like it as well, for the for the reason you mentioned, and also because he, he has two, two of those Warzone Commanders in his hand. If he only had one, it would kind of be questionable to throw it exactly. out there, because you, you can't know if the, if the last Warzone Commander is on the bottom of your deck. <laughs> so that would cause a lot of problems, but now with the, with the other one in the hand already, he, he can kind of, like, afford to lose one. With seeing two, okay, yeah, I was gonna say with seeing two rats, you play the patron. This is bad to drew the claw and um, okay, oh. drew the claw, and uh, swipe. But yep, I think you just play it. Hero power. That's interesting that Show is playing Armor Smith and Grim Patron Warrior. Is that like a common card in Grim Patron Warrior or? Yeah, I mean, the I list that, at least was has been like floating around the interwebs and was like topping the Reddit a couple of days ago had one in it, and personally I was trying out two today. But um, it, it kind of, it's a bit like matchup dependent. Against, against the Hunter you always like wish that you had two, and uh, uh, in some other matchups you might be like, eh, I can't even use one if you're playing against Control. So this is last patron. Mm -hmm. That's very, uh, I don't know. Oh. I like this, I like this from Zixo. Yeah. I really yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, you gotta clear those. Yeah, like it's what like... what? Okay, show just lost like all of his threat potential right there. There's no more patrons. You don't have to worry at all. Like, I mean, frothings are an issue, obviously, and I'm not sure if he's running boom or like uh, grom, but like clearing both patrons, it's very important. Yeah, frothing frothing is the way to go for sure. Oh, so <laughs> aggressive. I like it. This is actually really good in the spot. Smork, smork. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, cool face. Wow. I like this, it. He has, he has two war axes. Like this is pretty amazing because like the Xixo has had those two lords in his hand, and usually it's like the best card against warrior. But Shio has been playing so incredibly aggressive. Like every turn that Shio has made, he has put out some kind of threat, some some kind of thing that needs to be dealt instantly, like or immediately. So Xixo. It's like, uh, what is it, turn 10? Turn 9. I like right cycling now. the wild card. Sixer has not had time to play one before. Yeah. I, I really don't see Sho play this aggressive. It's kind of <laughs> refreshing to see. Wow, that was... That might have been the best draw. Oh, he, oh my goodness. Wow. Getting the card draws. I mean, Battle Rage would also kind of rock, but uh, these, are, these are good stuff. Play all the things. Yes. Yeah, as I, I was I was talking about, why didn't Zixo Wild Growth last turn? Maybe uh, maybe it's not that important. Maybe he valued the armor more or something or the damage. I'm not sure. It's interesting. No. How do you clear this now? Uh, how, force of nature, Bombo. savage war. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Mm. That's just deal with it, and uh, he also has a belt for next turn, so he might be able to stabilize with that. It doesn't quite clear the board though. No, but the acolyte. It's it's not that meaningful. You can just leave it up. Uh, he might leave up the gnomish. I think uh, he's scared of. I, I, I wouldn't want to give a draw. Okay. For the warrior, because warriors don't one card. And yeah. now with like an acolyte, there's potential that there's no activation for it for it. And uh... all right, that's a cycle. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Should be like okay. roll one cycle again. Yep. Hoping to find something nice. Uh, if that was in the other order, oh man, that'd be sick. Yeah. Would have been way better, obviously. Six or down to seven HP. 
But he he does have the Belcher now. Yeah, Belcher, and then you can... <laughs> Plays I like I like Pokemon. yeah I like Keeper a lot more than uh, Shredder. You just want to keep the lower the Warrior low on cards, make sure he doesn't draw anything. Yep, I agree. This is I haven't seen many Grim Patron Warrior lists. The only one I was really ooh, there's Grimash. Wow. Yeah. That's a big one. Do you do you? No, 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 no. I, I think you I think you save it. Wait for an activator. Yeah, Just yeah. for activators. You you run a double inner rage in this deck, or at least one, right? Oh, whoa. Oh, I I don't like this because we, well, there actually is no big game hunter, yeah. so we can see that it's gonna work out. It's actually a really good play. It's the best play. Like if if you saw the hands. But personally, I don't like this because they they could have been a BGH. He has to draw the floor here. Easily could have been a big game hunter. Yeah, I I don't know. I when you're up. 2-0 in a, in a format mm. like this sometimes you can make plays like this where you're just like well I'll put them on like you know a 40% chance of having BGH or like you know 60% yeah. chance of having BGH or just winning the game right up and mm. uh, winning the game ends the series so obviously you know you don't get punished or anything so I like yeah. it yeah I can't argue against that winning the game is pretty good <laughs> but um, I just feel like Druids uh, don't usually run that many taunts and you, he kind of had the time he could have just waited like one draw he could have waited two draw and yeah. that's just like clear the clear the slime next turn with the weapon, and eventually he would draw into the into lethal. That's true. But I mean, this might be a game right here, and let's six know, like... deal with it. Okay, he can still draw into BGH. Yes, mm -hmm. I believe it has to be exactly BGH. Yep. Is there any other way? That's not it. He could have. Maybe, he might have been looking for rag. Ooh, that's that's a quick quick sweep from show. Oh. Yeah. Oh well, okay. Well, that was quick. Yay! Jeez, that, was, <laughs> that was. Oh, That's poor Zixo. Nice. Uh, I don't know. I I feel like he just drew pretty poorly. It was, it was still like what very well played by Show though. He made all the right decisions, even like, you know, plays that we probably wouldn't have made, like the Gromash mm -hmm. play. Like they were all the very like the correct decisions based on hand knowledge. So That's really good. Yep. And uh, even though I, I was like, eh, eh, that might be bad by the Chrome there, he actually, like you said, it was a game, it was a play to win the game, and that's exactly what happened. If, if he didn't play it right there, it, it's possible that uh, he would have just run out of steam if the, if mm -hmm. the next two draws would have been bad, and uh, Six has just played more stuff. Yeah. So, um, hmm. Xio's debut in Team Liquid, very decisive. <laughs> I was like, what was that? That was like 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 15 minutes, 3 0. How often does that happen? That face on our game was disgusting, man. <laughs> that's like the quickest. I hate those games. Because, like, the Warlock's, like, you know, tap, flame mm -hmm. him. He's, like, helps helps you kill him. And then. Yeah. Ugh. It's like both of the hero powers are, like, the same. Deal two damage to the Warlock. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's just, the Warlock hero power just kind of, like, doesn't match up the, all that well <laughs> against the Hunter. <laughs> But with the hand dog, maybe sometimes you can turn it around with um, with molten giants because you can you have that swing turn. Yeah. You drop the moldens, you taunt them up, you heal up. But uh, that's not in the Zulok. <laughs> There's no heals in there. And uh, if the start is not good, if he cannot, if he can't get the, the aggression going. Yeah. Thing it's, is, it's like possible. Sue usually doesn't have sweepers, and Handlock does. So you have to um, you have to contest the board really early as Zoo. If you don't draw well, like, you know, Zixo drew pretty poorly, <laughs> then uh, you're just going to be taking damage, and then you don't have a sweeper, and then, yeah. Just... Yeah. In in the acro matchups in general as well, like, when both players are playing some kind of aggressive decks, it, it, it tends to go go one player's way on the, like, first three turns. Like, whoever gets the, the, like the, mm, the advantage early on, very early on, is the one who's going for face, and the other one is the trying, exactly. the one trying to like stabilize, and it's it's really hard to come back from that, unless you have uh, some kind of catch up, which is which is just not there, unless maybe juggler implosion, no, yeah, that's just Malganis or something, get lucky. Yeah, Malganis from the void color, that's a that's a big one. Yeah, but also not that reliable. You don't always throw it, throw a void color. You don't always draw Malganis. <laughs> Didn't draw it this time and got. And owned with the zoo. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit unfortunate. So show is now four three in the league. Zixo three four. Show still, I think, has a chance to get to the playoffs, which is pretty important. Yep. Yeah. Um. 
it's gonna be fighting against me, <laughs> me for it. Well, luckily we are not playing against each other, but uh, I'm also oh, wow, at that that same, same four and three. Yeah. Yeah. Who do we have? Maybe we both in our matches would be good for the team. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. If you guys both made it to the playoffs. Yep. Um, everybody who's using Twitter, and it's just a reminder. If you tweet about the, the leak that's going on right now, tell your friends that, it, that this is happening. It's Wednesday. Usually the leak has been on Thursdays. So it's a bit like um, different this week. Not everybody might know that it's going on. So remember the tweet. If, if, if you tweet about it, use the hashtag KingWinLeague. And uh, some of the tweets will be shown on stream. Might be you. <laughs> also, uh, KingWin is looking for casters right now. Like, you see me and Doc here. Hi. Uh, we are um, we are just like filling in. We are we are mostly like uh, playing in the league and stuff, but um, there is an opening. Uh, so make sure to send your application if if you want to become a caster for K KPL. Send a VOD of, with your casting skills to esports at kingwin.net. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, what have you been playing lately? Let's talk about something else. What, um, have, you, what, what have you been streaming on? Uh... So, I haven't been doing very well on ladder. I've had the most success with Rogue, 100%. It's just pretty solid against everything. I think it's like the best deck for ladder almost all the time, just because it can handle every deck. Even like Warrior is an unfavorable matchup, but you can still win that. So that's usually what I use. What about you? I've been just like playing all sorts of like goofy decks, I don't know. <laughs> I've got kind of bored of Oil Rogue, even though it's like really strong. Exactly. I'm just like, I played like the Patron Warrior, which we just saw win against the <laughs> Druid. That's the, that's the new thing. Everybody like, uh, you need to get updated to like uh, what's going on. Uh, like up to date, so. Oh man, the new the cards. Old Warrior is out and... Uh, yeah, Grim Patron in. Patron Warrior is in. New cards come out tomorrow, like I've been testing with... Um, yeah. Like control roguish, like mid range control rogue, right? With gang up, like it's almost there. I, I, I think it's almost there. It has potential. It's like definitely there. And then, yeah, I think uh, Dark Iron Skulker will definitely help it because I'm not sure if you can actually run Flurry in that deck. It's just like too much. Where mm -hmm. I think Skulker might, which I, I said was like gonna be a pretty bad card because you know five drop already filled up, all that jazz. But yeah. it'll be nice to try it out. Yeah, I'm really waiting for like new new dragons, like hungry dragon, just to make that paladin dragon deck work. Like please, that's <laughs> it's like so five bad. kind of Yeah, it is. I'm so sad about it because I really wanna play it, but I'm just like trying to play it, okay, well lose losing and losing and losing and then I make changes and I keep losing. It's so hopeless. But, but they're like the five mana dragon. Five five mana five five. Innervate for a dragon on any turn. Which is like following, it's like so good, but it just doesn't quite got it. I don't I, know. I think it's because like all the stuff at five mana, because you can only run at like a certain amount of five mana thingies. So when there's like awesome dragons which cost not five mana, maybe it'll work. Yeah, I don't know if uh, Hungry Dragon will see. Wait, is Hungry Dragon released next week or is it um, Blackwing, whatever? The one that like is a neutral fire elemental. I think we get the, the I think Hungry, it's hungry Dragon, dragon right? Okay. Yeah. I, I think Hungry Dragon will like everyone will play it for a week and then they'll be like, eh, it's like okay and then like they'll go back to Shredder because you know, Shredder if it gets Aldored, at least your token doesn't get Aldored and like things like that and I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know how good that card will be. Well I, I'm, I'm to be completely honest, I'm not that huge of a fan either. But it's like the thing is uh, if it's only slightly worse than Shredder, I'm, I'm not expecting it to be better than Shredder, but it's, if it's only slightly slightly worse, just ha just being a dragon might be like good enough exactly, to yeah. help out decks like Paladin, who just can't afford the 5 mana dragons, and there's like no other good dragons except 5 mana dragons. Yeah. So uh, like, overall strategy, it, oh, and there's also another thing that I, I want to mention about that, because uh, Paladin plays those 3 mana weapons, it's the Gog Hammer, just the Master of a Battle, so if you play that on turn three, then you play the play the hungry dragon on turn four. Yeah, you already yeah. have a weapon to deal with the one drop. So. Actually, didn't think about yeah. paladin like that. That's that's good, for sure. All right, so um, I think we're going for a break now. Uh, we had a really fast <laughs> first match. The next one coming up will be Caldi versus Hyde. So um, 